Jimbooey, Jimbooey, he was a bold, adventurous man. Jimbooey, Jimbooey, battled for right with a powerful hand. His blade was tempered and so was he. Indestructible steel was he. Jimbooey, Jimbooey, he was a fighter, a fearless and mighty adventurous man. traveler from the Ohio River Valley had two ways of getting to New Orleans. Either he traveled down the Mississippi and risked his life and fortune with the river pirates, or he followed the dangerous overland trail known as the Natchez Trace, infested with bandits and highwaymen. Either way, the journey was beset with peril. But to Jim Bowie, whose business ventures took him far and wide, these perils were the natural risks to be encountered in a raw country where only the strong survived. To Jim Boy, these perils spelled adventure. No, oh, anybody here? in the wagon. How about a little talking first and shooting after? Huh? I don't mean you any harm. What are you scared of? everybody. There was only me and Pop. They killed him. They? Yeah. I thought you was one of them coming back after me. You mean I look like one of the men who killed your father? I don't know. I never saw him. It was still dark when they came last night and I was asleep in the wagon. I heard their voices and heard them ask Pop if they could sleep by the fire. He said yes and pretty soon it was quiet so I went to sleep again. Some shots woke me up and all I could see was some men riding away on horses. They'd taken Pop's money and shot him. I see. Who uh, buried your father? I did. What's your name, son? Peter Jelkins. I'm Jim Boy. Where are you from? Kettlesboro, Kentucky. I was born in Kentucky, too. Where are you heading? Natchez. We was gonna meet... My mother. She was kind of sick, so Pa sent her by boat. Oh. Well, um... Just so happens I'm heading that way. You want to come with me? I'm not afraid. I can take care of myself and them robbers, too, if they come back. Oh, I wasn't thinking of you. I was thinking of myself. It's kind of scary traveling alone. It's nice to have company. Especially company that can shoot as good as you. How about it, Peter? You want to come with me? Well, let's uh, take a look around, shall we? A lot of hoof marks here in the soft earth. Looks like uh, two horses and a donkey or a burro. See those little hoof marks there? The guide wanted more money. Why didn't you offer it to him? I did. He wouldn't budge a foot further. Well, Hawk or no Hawk, we can't sit here in the middle of the wilderness forever. 
Either we go on without a guide or we turn back. It's times like this when a woman needs a man like your father. He'd never have been scared out by any hawk. Uh, pardon me, folks. I couldn't help overhearing. What is this about the hawk being on the trace again? It is true. Twice the hawk struck during the past week. He robbed and murdered both victims. Oh, allow me to introduce myself. I am Deacon Haskell of Piney Ridge. I have uh, traveled the trace many times, spreading the gospel, and I have yet to come to any harm. Perhaps you are unduly alarmed. Don't fool yourself, Deacon. It was the hawk, all right. He always treats his victims the same way, robs them and then kills them. Now, you folks want my advice, you won't venture out on that trace without a good guide. Peter, about a man moving out west to find some breathing room? Hereabouts, man can't hardly find a hitching space. Come on, let's you and me go in the store and get ourselves some groceries and be on our way. Well, howdy, Jim. Hey, I see you're carrying that new knife Mr. Black made for you. Oh, boy, that sure is a beauty. Yes, sir. Don't mind telling you, it feels good hanging there, too. Ah, I thought you was heading for home. I was. Changed my mind. I got myself a new partner. He's got an appetite bigger than mine. We need some groceries. Slab of bacon, five pound of beans, please. Right. Say, wasn't you in here just yesterday with a kind of an oldish man? That was my father. His father was murdered and robbed on the trace a few miles south of here. I'm taking him to Natchez to his mother. You hear that, folks? His father was robbed and murdered on the trace just south of here. Oh, poor boy. Was it the man called the hawk? He doesn't know. He was asleep. He only woke up when they were riding away. He didn't see him clearly. Just heard their voices. Yeah. Uh, Peter, will you take us out the wagon? Huh? Well, don't just stand there, Samuel, with your mouth open. Tell us what we do now. Well, what can we do without a guide? Well, the trace is clearly marked. Just follow the wagon track. Well, the truth is, Jim, these folks ain't used to traveling by trail. They're from the city. Oh. Our guide was scared out by all this talk of the hawk operating again. He left us flat. Miss Pope and I have to get to Natchez. We're getting married. Mr. Cummins is her fiancé, and the lady there is her mother, Mrs. Pope. Howdy, ma'am. And uh, I didn't catch your name, mister. August Meyer. I come from Germany. And the gent with the stovepipe hat is Deacon Haskell from Piney Ridge. Howdy do, sir. Folks, meet Jim Boy. I don't mind telling you all, the trace is no place for a bunch of greenhorns. I'm begging your pardon, ma'am. Oh, don't apologize, Mr. Bowie. We're greenhorns, all right. There's no mistake in that. All the same, if I were a man, I'd show that hawk a thing or two. Yeah, I bet you would at that. Uh, Mr. Bowie, as long as you're going along to Natchez, why don't we tag along with you? We'll pay your guide's fees. Well, now, Miss Pope, I... Please, Mr. Bowie, I have funds with me. It will be a disaster if I lose them. And I have my dowry. You wouldn't want me to be a pauper when I got married, would you, Mr. Bowie? With beauty such as yours, miss, a lady would never be poor. You hear that, Samuel? Why can't you ever say nice things like that? You'd be doing them a real favor, Jim. If the hawk is loose on the trace, these folks wouldn't have a chance. Now, seeing as how you're going that way anyhow with a little problem, you might as well take along a big one. <laughs> well, all right. But on one condition, I'm boss. Oh, that's fine with me. <laughs> now, Lucy, don't you give Mr. Bowie any trouble. If she does, you have my permission to give her a good switching. Thank you, ma'am. That'll be a pleasure. Fine with me, Mr. Bowie. Me too. May I go along too, sir? Of course, Deacon. Well, now that that's settled, when do we start? Right now. Load up, everybody. I'll be ready in about half an hour. No, we're leaving now, miss. But I would like to take a bath and change. We're leaving now, with or without you, Miss Pope. Excuse me, ma'am. I have a feeling it can give a good hard switching, Lucy. Spell you, Sam. His name is Samuel, Mother. Well, I like Sam. Sounds more like a man. Well, I like Sam, too. Well, I like Samuel, and you're going to be called Samuel. 
Do you know what my husband would have done to me if I'd screamed at him like that? He'd have kicked me right in the bustle. I'd like to see somebody try that with me. <laughs> so would I. What? Mother, can't you hurry? I'm so hungry. Oh, you can't cook anything on this till it burns down. It's far enough here to roast the side of a cow. <laughs> that fire's to keep warm by, Miss Pope. In a few minutes, you'll have a small fire to cook over. Who's missing? Where's Cummins? Send him after some bath water for me. I said no one was to leave camp without my knowledge. You want to get your young man killed, Miss Pope? Mr. Bowie, you have such a loud, threatening voice. I'm sure no robber would have the courage to come near us. <gasps> you... There's work to be done, Miss Pope. Get on your feet and help your mother cook supper. Mr. Bowie, you remind me so much of my dear departed husband. Thank you, ma'am. You grind. Go on, grind. How many fires you see, Jacques? Two. Looks like the Ark has discovered the Pompidou. Thank you, ma'am. Well, I guess it's about time to turn in. No. Right now. Come on, Peter. You sleep in the wagon. Time to stop, time to eat, time to sleep. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a bossy man. Well, he's done right well being bossy. Owns nearly the biggest plantation in Louisiana. Really? You better give me your jewelry, Lucy. Oh, are you gonna sleep, Mr. Bowie? 